Hey guys, so I want to talk to you about organizing your files. A lot of people get confused on where to put what, and at the end of this video, you should have confidence that you can kind of do whatever you want as long as you have kind of an organized system. You know, nothing's ever going to be perfect. It's always going to be evolving, and it's always going to get a little unorganized at times. But the more organized that you can be, the quicker producing is going to be for you. So let me start off from the beginning. I'm going to go through some of these different locations here. These are all the instruments, MIDI effects, and, and audio effects that Ableton comes with. And these are already organized pretty darn well. So you're going to notice all your different instruments here, MIDI effects and audio effects. And within each of those, you're going to have all the different presets. So if I open drum presets, here you go. You've got these are basically what your presets look like. This is also going to be a location where you could save your own presets. And I've, I've got a lot of my own presets here, like in the drum rack instruments. And this can all be done by adding folders to your library. And I'll get to that in just a second. But basically here, as far as the audio, MIDI effects, and things like that, you don't have to really worry about organizing those because Ableton does that for you. The only thing that you will want to organize is, like I said, your own presets. I have more important things. I usually put zeros in front of it so that it shows up at the top. The next little locator here, this is all your third-party plugins. Just like Ableton's internal one, these plugins are going to be organized pretty well also. So as you add a new third-party plugin, it's typically going to either put them in the audio units folder or VST folder. And once again, you could add your own folders if you want to organize it however you like. And I'll show you how to do that in the library. So these three things are, are three different library locations. So here's our first location. And this is my Ableton library here. And just for your information, I put my library and I put my sample folders. And I also put temporary file locators all on external hard drives. Unless you've got like a terabyte or more on your regular hard drive, it's probably going to be a good idea for you to have an external drive for your music. You know, space gets eaten up pretty quick. So here's the Ableton library folder. And as you can see, it organizes things in a specific way. And I put my samples inside the library as well. And I'll get to that in just a second. Presets are right in here. So if you want to create your own folders, you would just simply go in, for example, the drum rack and I've created my own folders here. When you create new presets, you could just simply, let me give you an example here. So let's say we have a, a drum rack instrument here. This is just empty right now, but let's say that I messed with it or whatever. All I have to do is just simply hit the save button here. When I've made changes, it will save it into the drum rack folder. And the way you'd be able to recognize it is you'd go and you'd rename your preset here. So that's just some of the basic. I mean, another thing that you can do is just drag it into whatever location that you would like. As you can see, it's just ready for me to add to whatever folder I want. And to open the folders, you just uh, hold them up there. Just hover it over a folder and it'll open it up for you. It also organizes uh, clips for you. And I've built some of my own clips as well. Like I might have a, a starter drum beat here and it'll make me a new track. And there we go. This is just a, a little starter beat that I've got. Nothing particularly special, but it can get me going on a song real quick. So if I make certain clips or beats or whatever, if I have a clip that I like, I'll just drag that clip in and name it. And then it'll be ready for me to use in the future if I want to just get something started. Now I'm going to get into kind of organizing your own files. And that would normally be your sample library. So you definitely don't want to just dump all your sounds into one folder randomly. What you'll want to do is you'll want to categorize it by, by whatever you recognize. So for me, I've got different drum hits and folders that I recognize, different song components, drone sounds, kits. I've got samples from uh, old projects that I've done, I don't know, nine years ago or something like that. And I just keep them all in one folder. And then I do have some random hits down here that haven't been placed in a folder. 
but ideally what I want to do is take these and, and throw them into one of the folders here or make a new folder. So every time I find a file that I can't categorize with the folder that I have, I just create a new folder and, and start that up. And this makes it really easy for me to find the sounds that I'm looking for right away. It's going to be pretty important to put it on an external hard drive if possible. And you might want to, to shave down and, and just have some, uh, you know, a quick folder with just some of your essential sounds on your internal hard drive so that if you don't have your external drive with you and you're out at a coffee shop or, you know, just out and about, you can get an idea down while you're out and about. And then when you get back home, you can work in some of your sample library or whatever. The next thing I'm going to show you is just music for DJing. I could have this more organized, but generally I make a location just for, for DJing and I have different styles of music. So I've got, you know, my 80s music here. And sometimes I, I just set up a whole folder dedicated to playing a show. So in this case, I had all these as, as options for the show. And as you can see, the numbers in the beginning I use a program called Mixed in Key, which is this program down here, to analyze all the song files. So that way I know basically what songs will work with other songs pretty quickly. And for example, with my house year sets, I like to create early, mid, and late song folders. So that way I've got kind of warm up, you know, when I'm starting my set, locking into a groove here, and then kind of building up to a peak towards the end. That's what works best for me when you know I'm doing a, a club gig. I put it together like you would a record box. You know, you, you pick a hundred or so songs that you think will work for that night and you know you work around that. What you may want to do is, is even make separate folders for different tempo of songs, you know, from slowest to fastest. Now I want to go into preferences here. And in the preferences you can ch change the, the default location, which I did because I wanted my library to be on an external drive. But what I do is I, I've got my external drive and I pop my library here on an external hard drive and it, it just has more stuff on it. Then you want to go into your file folder and you're definitely going to want your temporary folder on an external hard drive. And I put my, my cache folder also on an external drive. And the reason that you want your temp folder on a bigger drive is because, especially if you're dragging in MP3s, Ableton doesn't actually use MP3s. What it does is behind the scenes, it converts those MP3s to AIF or WAV files and puts them in a temporary folder. So even though your MP3s might not take up much space, if you've set up like a DJ set in Ableton that has 100 songs already in your set, all of those are going to actually be in WAV form on a temporary drive, which can eat up a lot of your hard drive space. And if it eats up too much, you can't bring in any more songs and just the set will start getting wonky. So you want to make sure that your temporary folder is in a place where you've got plenty of space. Because I've ran into situations where I had temporary folder on my internal drive and it's filled up. I was having, you know, during a live set, I was having to delete certain files so I could drag new files in and it just became a, a little bit of a, a mess. So make sure to do that and you'll be in really good shape. Your VST folder is where your third party plugins are gonna be here. And you could change the location of that or you can just use the default. I think using the default location is fine. But also what's great is this lets you know where each of your folders is. So if you're looking for something, just jump into your preferences and this will show you exactly where your folders are, if you forget. The last thing I want to look at here is music projects. I make a separate folder for all my projects. And what I'll do, let me show you. Now typically what I'll do is when I'm working on a track or something, I'll, I'll put the, the song on the desktop and then I'll end up bringing it into here after I'm kind of done working on it. Just because I have so many in this folder that I usually try to keep myself organized with what I'm currently working on. So the important thing here is that each of the songs has their own folder and that all the samples are saved inside the folder, like so. So the way that that works is just so you don't ever lose the samples because a lot of times you grab samples from you know different locations and things like that and you might go back to a song years later and that folder either doesn't exist or it's in a different location and finding the files again is a real pain 
So what you want to do is you first want to save your song when you're working on it. So if you've got a project, you're just going to go to Save As, name it, and then it'll put it into a folder like so. And then the second thing that you're going to want to do afterwards is go to Collect All and Save. And I say yes to everything. Then hit OK. And then what it'll do is it'll save all the samples into your project folder. So that way, if you zip this folder up and send it to another computer or uh, share it with someone, they've got everything they need inside the folder. You don't have to go hunting for samples. I, I locate this on an external hard drive. Um, and usually I'll back it up onto multiple places because, you know, I'd hate for the hard drive to crash and to lose all my music. But anyway, yeah, very important. Just created one location for all your, all your songs and projects. So that's just a little bit about organizing your files and preparing them for production and for DJing.